Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a science fiction film called Mafia, The Game of Survival. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Sometime in the near future, a popular game show known as Mafia has taken the attention of the entire world, but no one knows who the real creator is. The game always starts with 11 people, where 9 are civilians and 2 are Mafias. The civilians need to find out the identities of the Mafias to win the game by voting the suspects out, but the oppositions can kill a person every night. Whichever side that's victorious will take home 1 billion dollars, but the people who are voted out will die a horrible death. After assigning everyone their roles, the creator tells the people to introduce themselves, starting with an old man whose name is Luca. It's quickly revealed that he is actually a very wealthy businessman who gambles everything including his own life, as he has become tired of the routines of living. The only family that he has are his children, who are waiting to take all his money like vultures. What they don't realize is that Luca has already signed away his wealth, and the kid will never get a single penny after his death, but the old man assures everyone that he's not a mafia. The next player is a man called Eli, and he claims that he has nothing to lose, as he was diagnosed with cancer that will end his life in 3 months. He decided to enter this game to earn money for his family before death, but his wife only wants him to be with her in the remaining days instead of dying in front of the world. Very soon, the announcer begins introducing the third and fourth contestants and tells the players that these two are actually playing for something else. It turns out that these people are dangerous criminals who decided to play this game to win back their freedoms. The younger man called Ivan assures everyone that he's falsely convicted, but this only causes the other criminal called Mr. Butcher to laugh at his face. The others begin introducing themselves as well, and just like the previous contestants, they all claim to be nothing more than innocent civilians. When everyone when finishes talking, the announcer begins to count down immediately as the players must now vote for who they think is the real mafia. This causes arguments between the contestants as they exchange insults towards each other, but a woman called Mary tells everyone to stop wasting time. Since nobody has any clue as to who the killers are, the girl decides to go by her first impressions and accuses a man whose name is Hero. Another man called Peter agrees immediately and tells everyone to vote right away, but this is quickly stopped by Mr. Butcher who recognizes Mary from a TV show. He also remembers that Peter was infamous for trying to pursue the woman as her number one fan, making them likely to be accomplices. It's quickly revealed that Mary was actually a popular dancer, but her career was destroyed by an accident that left her unable to walk anymore. Her fame quickly disappeared after losing the ability to dance, and she was not able to obtain the prosthetics which are too expensive to buy. This gave her no other choice but to enter the Mafia game, as it was the only way for her to get back her life. Realizing that their cover is blown, Peter admits that this is true, but assures the players that they're not working together as Mafias. The people find this hard to believe as they begin voting for the woman altogether, causing Mary to blame Peter for everything that's happening as she falls into tears. The man tries to save the girl by telling the people that he's the Mafia, but this fails to convince the others as Mary is quickly voted out. The woman is forced to reveal her true identity by raising her hand, and the people are shocked to see that she's actually a civilian after all. Suddenly, the woman's chair begins to move as it brings her closer to the black sphere, and eventually consuming her body altogether, which causes her to fall unconscious. Mary is quickly brought into a place that's filled by rings and thunderclouds, where the lightning descends furiously from the sky. The energy begins chasing the woman as she runs desperately across the forest and trying to take away her life in the process. Mary is forced onto a cliff while the lightning approaches closer, giving her no other choice but to jump off as the energy kills her in the end. Her body is turned into dust inside the black sphere as the empty chair is pulled back into the platform, making the players realize that this can eventually be their fate as well. The creator is not impressed by the player's choice 
forces as the night begins to fall upon the city, which allows the mafias to kill a civilian without the others knowing. When the lights appear inside the building once again, the mafias have already chosen someone to be killed, and it's quickly revealed that the next victim is Mr. Butcher. This causes the man to burst out in anger as he shouts furiously at the other players, but Peter seems to be happy with the result as he blames the criminal for Mary's death. Very soon, the man is taken into the black sphere as well, and Mr. Butcher is brought inside a large building all by himself where numerous people are cheering on the balconies. The criminal quickly realizes that he's in danger when the two approaching men begins attacking him by using their weapons and kicking him towards the ground. Luckily, Mr. Butcher is able to retaliate as he begins fighting dirty and manages to kill one of his opponents. However, the enemies quickly regenerates and continues fighting back no matter how many times the man kills them and turns them into dust. After many rounds of battle, the criminal is eventually able to dispose the opponents permanently as he roars furiously towards the crowds in victory. The prisoners all cheer at the man's bravery as Mr. Butcher thinks that he has won, but this was all part of the creator's plan. The man walks backwards and trips onto the ground, causing him to smash into the rocks which ends up killing him like a fool in front of everyone. They return back to the game once again, and the players must now vote for a second time to figure out the mafia's true identities. The timer begins to count down like before and a mysterious man known as Constantine claims that he knows who the mafias are. It's quickly revealed that the man actually has a mutation in his brain that allows him to see the future, and he uses the ability to work as a crisis consultant for large companies. Constantine tells the people that Peter is the real mafia, as he was the one who killed Mr. Butcher to avenge Mary's death. Although the logic seems to make sense, the people have trouble believing the words of a stranger, but to their surprise, Peter actually agrees with the accusation. The people begin laughing at the man's foolishness, but Peter quickly reveals that Constantine's identity is mafia as well. This causes everyone to start voting for them both at the same time, but Peter eventually takes the majority as the prime suspect. The man laughs quietly and tells the players that they made a mistake, as he reveals that he's also nothing more than a civilian while Constantine smirks in victory. Very soon, the chair begins to bring the man into the air, but Peter is very happy that he can finally join the woman that he loved. The black sphere eventually brings the man into a vast ocean, where Peter wakes up inside a small vessel that's surrounded by water. He tries to paddle his way out from the situation, but the creator sees this and quickly punctures a hole inside the man's boat, which causes water to flood in. What's even worse, numerous sharks begin to appear inside the ocean and surrounding the man with nowhere to run. Peter realizes that he's not going to make it on land, and decides to gamble by using the broken paddle to stab the sea creatures. This manages to injure the animal and causing it to bleed inside the water, which begins attracting all the other sharks towards the blood. The creatures quickly devour the victim by ripping it into pieces, while Peter takes the chance and jumps into the water as he tries desperately to swim away. When the man is close to approaching the island, he quickly realizes that all the lands are disappearing right in front of him. Very soon, the sharks have all finished eating their prey and begins rushing towards the human in great numbers. Realizing that he's about to be killed, Peter begins to see the woman that he loved so much before being devoured by the giant sharks. Because the players failed to find the mafia after three civilians have died, the game allows the people to cast their votes one more time before the night. A middle-aged man called Walter begins to speak first, and it's quickly revealed that he's actually a high-ranking officer in the army with numerous battle experiences. However, he quickly became psychologically unstable after losing all his men in the battlefield, which he believes that he's the only one to blame. Walter begins talking down towards the criminal sitting beside him as he despises the people who disobeys the law, but Ivan continues telling everyone that he's actually innocent. Their conversation is quickly interrupted by a woman called Larissa who thinks that the officer is a bully, which causes the soldier to reveal Ivan's true crime. It turns out that the young man was a new graduate who was celebrating alongside his friends, but they carelessly crashed their vehicle into the walls. Ivan was able to survive alongside the driver, but two of their friends were killed inside the car during 
during the explosion, which eventually brought them into the courtroom. Unfortunately, all the witnesses claimed that Ivan was the one driving that night, which caused him to be sentenced into prison right away. The young man desperately begs the people to believe him while the officer begins to argue with Larissa and suspecting that both Ivan and the woman are mafias. He quickly votes for the woman as he tries to convince the others to do the same, but his erratic behaviors only makes himself look very suspicious instead. This causes all the others to vote for him as a result and eventually sentencing the officer to die as he shouts furiously towards all the players. He shows the people that he's also another innocent civilian and tells everyone that they're going to die as well. Very soon, the giant chair begins pulling the commander into the black sphere and eventually sending him into his worst nightmare. Walter is put into a reality where he's commanding all his soldiers, but the men are quickly ambushed by the enemies and killed one by one, eventually leaving him as the only survivor. The officer rushes out to face the opponents by himself as he tries to save his men, but is forced to witness the carnage that is caused by his incompetence. Before Walter has any time to mourn, he's quickly surrounded by the enemies in the building and eventually killed by the bullets just like his friends. After the officer's death, the time has come for the mafia to choose another victim as the night falls upon the city, while the people wait hopelessly for the results. When the lights eventually come back, the announcer tells the people that the mafia has chosen Larissa as the next person to be killed, but the woman doesn't seem to be afraid. It turns out that Larissa used to be a fabulous wife who has a great husband, but she slowly destroyed everything when she started drinking by herself. Her habits eventually ended her marriage by making her family abandon her, which caused her to stay inside her own apartment for many years. This all ended when one day she drove on the highway and saw an accident happen in front of her own eyes, where she managed to save a young man who turns out to be Ivan. However, Larissa reveals that she was also responsible for destroying the boy's life as she was given a lot of money to falsely accuse Ivan as being the driver. She apologizes to the young man for causing him so much pain, but surprisingly, Ivan eventually decides to forgive her despite what she did. Very soon, the chair begins to bring the woman towards the black sphere as it prepares to send her into her nightmare as well. Larissa is brought into the sky as she wakes up in an airplane all by herself, but quickly realizes that the aircraft is heading directly towards a massive storm. The clouds begin to grow tentacles like it's somehow alive, eventually destroying the airplane's engines and causing it to fall towards the hurricane. The flight attendant tells Larissa to not worry, but is quickly pulled away by the winds that ripped open the entire plane and causing everyone to panic. The clouds eventually surrounds the people like a bunch of demons as they begin to twist the aircraft and shredding it into pieces while killing everyone who's inside. After Larissa is dead, only 6 players are remaining and the people still haven't found any of the mafias yet. Kiro thinks that the suspect is obviously Ivan as he must have recognized Larissa from the beginning and killed her for his own vengeance. A young woman called Katia disagrees and thinks that it could also be Constantine as he told everyone to vote for Peter in the beginning who turned out to be a civilian. Surprisingly, instead of arguing, Constantine only tells the woman one of his prophecies where she needs to go towards the triangular shape when she has nowhere else to run. Very soon, the voting quickly begins and the people's opinions are split between Ivan and Constantine which makes it unable to determine a majority. However, what the people didn't expect was for Constantine to vote for himself in the end, which shocks all the players into disbelief, including the creator as well. This forces him to reveal that he is actually one of the mafias in the game before being brought towards the giant black sphere just like the previous victims. Constantine is put into a dark stairway as he eventually finds a bunch of mirrors on the wall and is shocked to see himself becoming old very quickly. This causes him to cough continuously and fall onto the ground as he slowly dies from the process of aging, but the man doesn't seem to be afraid. He tells everyone that this was part of his plan as he successfully changed the course of the game from its original destiny. He claims that the creator will eventually lose because of what he did as the players will destroy the existence of the game in the future. Constantine eventually dies on the ground, but the announcer pays no attention to the man's threats as he begins the next round where the mafia gets to kill another civilian. When the lights come back inside the building, 
ending, the announcer reveals that the mafia has chosen Ivan to be killed. Even though the young man is about to die, he realizes that he has already won, as he managed to reclaim his innocence in front of all the audiences, and most importantly, his own mother. All the people watching sadness as Ivan is brought towards the black sphere of death, where he's put into a prison cell to be executed despite his innocence. However, inside the man's vision, he's able to see his mother once again, where the woman displays her proudness towards her son. When Ivan sees the expression of his mother's face, the man finally obtains the courage to face death as all the guns fire towards him and killing him in the process. After Ivan is gone, there's only 4 players left, which means that they cannot afford any more mistakes in the voting process, but everyone seems to be more confused than ever before. Ilya accuses Kiro of working together with Katia, as the two seems to be overly familiar with each other, causing him to think that they're actually lovers. It turns out that they do know each other from before the game, as they met in a bar before all this happened, but Kiro refused the assumption that they're conspiring together. With this confirmation, Luca believes that their fates are all in the hands of the couple now, but Katia is unable to make any decision as to who they should kill next. Very soon, the timer quickly runs out and the game is forced to choose a victim randomly which turns out to be Katia herself, but she reveals that she's also just a civilian. The woman apologizes for failing all the players as she gets brought into the air, but Kiro manages to break out in the last moment as he desperately grabs onto the woman's chair. This causes them both to be brought into the black sphere, as the creator watches in curiosity since this has never happened before in the previous games. The two are quickly moved into a mysterious location, where the man regains consciousness and realizes that they're standing on nothing but glass. He tells the woman to not be afraid and begins walking towards her, but quickly sees that the entire floor is cracking from underneath. Realizing that time is running out, the man immediately runs towards the girl as the ground begins shattering into pieces right under his feet. Kiro is able to reach the woman just in time, but they're forced to jump in the last moment and fall into the abyss. When the man eventually wakes up, he's surprised to see that they're still alive, but finds out that they're completely lost. However, the people soon notice the triangle that Constantine talked about and realizes that it must be the only way out. The two continue venturing towards the rocks as they make it inside the valley, but the man quickly notices that something is wrong as numerous tentacles begin to surround them. This causes the people to run immediately as they try desperately to evade the monsters. The two eventually makes it through the rocks and entering into a large field, where the boss music begins to play and a giant monster made from lava starts crawling out towards them. Kirill tells the girl to hide immediately as he rushes in to face off his worst fear, and causing the monster to attack the man repeatedly by using its claws. Luckily, Kiro is able to dodge the enemy just in time and quickly notices that the creature has a weakness for sunlight which evaporates the monster's skin. The man is able to conjure up a plan as he sees the necklace on the enemy's head which causes him to run towards the monster immediately as he climbs onto the creature's arm. Kiro jumps in and grabs onto the necklace before falling onto the ground while the creature launches in to attack him furiously. The man takes the chance and reflects the light towards towards the monster, which is quickly able to bring down the creature by burning its body and turning it into dust. He takes the necklace and puts it onto the mechanism which completes the puzzle on the wall, causing them to be consumed by a giant tornado that eventually brings them towards the creator. On the other side, the announcement tells the audiences that the game is over, as the killer is still alive when there's only one civilian left, meaning that the mafia has won. However, this is not the true ending for Kiro and Katia, as the creator explains that this was all part of his plan. He purposely allowed the man to escape from his chair to allow the impossible to happen inside the game, as the people have become tired of the same outcomes inside the show. He also reveals that their bodies are still inside the black sphere, and allows them to live on this one time, but warns the people that he will always be the one who controls the game. Sometimes later, Ilya is able to go home to his family as he quickly reveals that he was the Mafia in the end, which allows him to leave 1 billion dollars for his loved ones before he dies. What the people don't realize is that Constantine was right about changing the history, as Kiro plans to enter the
the game once again, so that he can finally stop the show that uses human lives as entertainment. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.